now that we've installed Mongo onto our local machines, we can run the server and access the data via a client command line interface. So to start the server um, in its own terminal window, um, we run mongod, which starts up the server. And we can see here that it's running on port 2017. To start up the command line interface for the client side, we can run mongo. Okay, so we can have a look and see what databases are currently available on the server. And to do that, we use the command show dbs, and that will give us a list of the databases that are currently available on this particular server. We can create a new database just by switching to that database. So to switch to a database, we use the command use and then the name of the database. So we'll create a database called people. So we've switched to our people database. So now that people is our current database, um, if we wanted to, we could remove that database by using the db dot drop database command and we would get an OK to say that it has been dropped. So let's add that database back in again. So to do that, we just use our use people and we have that database again. So we can now create a collection for that database. So a collection is similar to a table in a relational database. So to create a, a collection, we'll do a db dot create collection and we'll pass into that uh, a name for our collection which we'll just call user info and it will return back with OK1 to say that that happened successfully. We can have a look now to see what all the collections are in this particular database and we can use the command of show collection to do that. Yeah, that was sorry, show collections. That's better. And we have our user info was the collection that we had added. So now that we've got a collection, we're ready to accept a document. So a document is a record as you would expect back in a relational database. Um, so let's add a new document to our user info collection. So I'll just grab this off screen and paste it in here. And so I'll run this through this one. So we're doing our db.userInfo. So user info is the name of our collection. We want to insert one. So we're going to insert a single record. And that single record is going to have a username a location, a postcode, and we'll add one more field onto that where we will put in a age field and we'll give them an age of 20. Okay. Okay, so I had a syntax error there, a legal character. One moment. Okay, my mistake. I did a cut and paste then from a Word document. So you'll notice the use of the um, extra quotes rather than the, the fancy quotes rather than a standard quote. Uh, what we should have seen would be this, where we have the standard quotes rather than the fancy quotes. And now we're good. We've added one record to our database. Um, so let's have a look now and we can actually do a find on our database, which is basically we're going to run a, a query that's then going to return all of the items in our collection. So we're doing a query on our collection. So it's going to be user info dot find. So an open uh, find like that is going to return everything for this particular collection. And so we can see when it does a return, it's returning back this ID, which is generated automatically by Mongo. 
um, and it generates this object ID, which is meant to be unique uh, for that ID. So that will uniquely identify this particular record. And we can see we have our username, our location, postcode, and age for that particular record is in there. Okay, so let's go and add some more records into the database. So here I've added in and I'm using a, um, a method called insert many. So the last time we did this, we did insert one where you insert a single record. This time we're going to insert many records. So what we pass into this is an array of records. So an array using our square bracket notation. And then we've got each of the records is then in its JSON notation um, for the objects inside that. So we can see we've added an extra one, two, three, four, six records into our database. We can do our db dot user info dot find returns all the information. We could also do a db dot user info dot find dot count to get a record of how many records we have in here. So we have the original record we added plus the six extra that we've just added in now. Okay, let's say that we made a mistake with Russell's record and we would like to get rid of it. We can do that relatively easily with the following command. So db.userinfo.remove and we can pass in a record or a query that it will respond to. The remove will only remove one record at a time. Um, this is probably not the safest way to do it, given that we may have multiple Russells in our system. Um, so if we were trying to do this and it to be unique, we would probably be wanting to search based on their ID rather than their name. But for the purposes of demonstrating what the uh, remove function does, this will do it fine. Oh, there I had a typo in there that I had an incorrect quote so I need to be matching my quotes so let's give that one a go okay so that's been successful and it's given back a right result saying that it has removed a record if we do our db dot user info dot find dot count we should see we now have six records okay so we've been able to create our database we've created a collection we've been able to add a single record we've been able to add multiple records we've been able to now remove a record so one last thing we probably want to do here is to actually update a record so we'll grab a query so we have a db.userinfo.update1 we have an update many option as well in this case we have the query that we want to um, use to define our object and then we have the value that's going to be changed so at the moment if we look back up here we see Marie there's a location of Sydney with a postcode of 2000. Well, she's just changed house. And so she's now at postcode 2048 instead of 2000. So we want to update that. So we select using the first part here to select, do the query for getting the record. And then the second part here does the updating and changes the postcode field to uh, 2048. Okay, and so that it's match count one and it has modified one record. So we've been using the find method a few times already, uh, which is essentially, if you've done anything with relational databases, would be your select query. Um, so we've got a few other options on what we can do with our select query. So we can do db.userinfo.find and in this case we want to grab everything but when we display this we only want to see the postcodes 
uh, postcode. Let me just put that. And postcode of one is just saying just show that one. These are all in name pair values. Uh, so um, this is just, we have to keep with the format of our name pair values of our JSON syntax. So we're saying we want to see postcode. We have to give it a value. Uh, the default there is just to give it as one. Okay. So this now returns our six objects, but it only displays the postcode for those particular queries. We also have the option within our find uh, to use comparison operators. So we could do a, a uh, db dot user info dot find and what we're going to look for here is that our um, postcode is and here we have the options for greater than less than equal to uh, less than and equal to greater than and equal to um, not equal to so we have a range of comparison options that we can try here. In this case, let's say that we're going to have our postcode will be greater than, um, let's say, 3000. Okay, let's try that. So here we get returned all the objects where their postcode was greater than 3000. So we've left out um, this one, also we've left out these two, the Sydney and Melbourne ones, and we've left all the Brisbane ones. Let's put a couple of these together. So here we'll do a, a query, which is going to look for everything that has a location, um, which is equal to Brisbane. And I just got type there and we'll find out how many people live in Brisbane in this database and we get the answer of four. So this is just a, a touch, an introduction to the, um, the querying and the language available for Mongo. Uh, there is a lot more online to have a look at. Um, so I'd encourage you to go and have a look at that um, and start playing with that, your Mongo database. As you can see here on the MongoDB website, um, Mongo comes with a range of different drivers for a range of different programming environments. So for us, we'll be working on the client side with Node.js. So we'll be needing the Node.js driver uh, for when we use Mongo. Uh, if we come into here, we'll see there's been a few releases um, for the Mongo Node.js driver. Uh, we'll be using the 3.1 driver, might as well use the latest one. Uh, if we go into the reference section, we'll see information here on how to install the driver uh, and some basic information on how to set up and use it. So there's some nice little code samples here um, of using the, uh, or accessing the Mongo database uh, from within a node application. Uh, so it's worth coming to this website um, to have a look at that stuff.